गुड इवनिंग मैम गुड इवनिंग <clears throat> okay so we'll continue with ipc provisions okay the remaining ones from unit 1 yes ma'am okay so before starting with the different types of crimes wherein punishment as well as the ingredients are mentioned in ipc before starting with that there are some basic uh, provisions that we get okay like we get a long list of definitions which are being provided ideally <clears throat> for most of the legislations we get the part in like section 2 of the legislation usually section 2 provides for all the definitions but in case of ipc we have other sections are uh, giving definitions like if you see this general explanation part this general explanation is nothing but the definitions which are given like if we take the definition of person if we take the definition of document counterfeit will omission everything is being defined just to make it very clear that when we are using this Certain word in the legislation. This is what it uh, means. Okay, yes. so if you look at any of the uh, definitions of different types of crimes, you will see it always uses this word he. Okay, that when a person commits this crime, he will be punished. His him like that it is mentioning. but that does not mean that ipc is not applicable in case of women right it's applicable in their case also that thing again is made very clear in this uh, definition called gender so it says even if we are using the male version of like words it also includes female as well like that different words are uh, being defined in ipc okay similarly there is another part which becomes important like if you look at your syllabus unit 2 there is something related to abetment okay abetment to commit a certain type of a crime is it punishable or not what will be the punishment like that also we have some uh, provisions given because when a crime takes place the situation may be like very complicated okay what would happen there we do not have much idea on that that's why all these provisions are there that if this happens this is the situation this is what we will call it like that there are few provisions and from that part we have this another section which is called possible parties to the crime when a crime is committed it's not just the person who we see committing the crime actually but there may be other people as well who are also like parties to the crime even though we have not seen them committing it still they are also considered as parties to the crime 
Okay, so there are these uh, four things that we need to understand. Principle in the first degree, principle in second degree, accessories before and after the fact. These are the four things that we will discuss today, okay? Now, all these four words, if you look for in the legislation in IPC, you would not find it because this provisions we have derived from the common law. Okay, what used to be followed in England, from there we just have this concepts for understanding and to differentiate between different parties who may be involved in a crime. But as such, if you look at IPC, you may not get these provisions, but still it becomes important for us to know this part, okay? Yes, ma'am. So first we will see what is, so possible parties to a crime, it's clear, right? When a crime is committed, who may be the parties to the crime? At the first instance, we see the one who is killing another one, right? And one person is killed and another person is killing. So the one who is killing that person would be like a party <laughs> to the crime. But are there some other people also whom we can include uh, in the responsibility or the liability? That's what we will see. So possible parties to the crime, we have principle in the first degree and second degree. Now, this is just an example, okay? Principle in first degree, and this is an example of principle in second degree. <clears throat> Take, for example, this is a person, okay? like an adult grown-up person who is having mens rea or guilty intention. Okay, this adult person is having a bad intention or a guilty mind to kill a certain human being, okay? This person wants to kill these two people. But what he is doing is he is not directly going and killing those two people, but rather he is using this child as his means to achieve his like intention, okay? So what he is doing is he is asking this child to go and kill these two persons. Okay. We already know, right, that a child below seven years yes. of age cannot commit a crime, right? It's yes. given in IPC. 82, 82, 83. Okay. So <laughs> if a child under seven years of age cannot commit a crime, who is responsible here? Because this child has not yet developed that much of maturity, right? So in such a case, what will happen? In such a case, we will say that even if the child has committed this crime, it's not the child who is guilty over here, right? It's this adult person who created such a situation or somehow convinced the child to commit a crime. Okay, so child is not criminally liable, but we can make this person criminally liable and he will fall under this principle in first degree. Even though, even if you were present in that given situation, you would not even see this person there. He might not even be present because he convinced this child to commit the crime. Over there, the person will still be held liable. He will fall under principle in first degree, okay? okay? So this is where the person is not even present. Still, he is made liable because he has somehow convinced the child or created such a situation where the child ends up killing the person. This is one example where this person is principal in first degree. Okay, as shown over here, he is the one. This is another example wherein this is the criminal who killed these two people. Okay, there is no one who is convincing him to kill, no one is paying him to kill these persons, no one is abating, no one is creating any situations or anything. He himself killed these two persons. Over there also. Okay this person will be considered liable under principle in first degree. Okay, that means someone may commit the crime using his own hands, using his own brain, using his own body, or he may take help of someone else also. Okay, but we okay. need to see whose help is being taken and over there we can say he will be responsible under principle in first degree. Okay, ma'am. <clears throat> now, what is principle in second degree? 
in this case there may be some people who are giving assistance okay even though you cannot see a person inside the car just assume there is a person okay okay here what is happening someone is there okay inside this car there is one person who is assisting him okay he is assisting him. he is like i'm waiting here you kill these two persons and you just come i'm waiting for you okay i'll take you home okay. in that case okay. what is happening? this person inside the car he even did not get down from his car right he is also not like technically present in the situation but he is providing some aid he is providing some assistance he is waiting over there that's why we call him principal in second degree okay even though he has okay. not committed the crime himself but still he is providing some sort of assistance okay so the person who is sitting inside the car that person's responsibility will be principal in second degree okay ma'am okay now if we look at the provisions here so these are just two examples and this is the explanation for it so principals in first degree are those uh, who who perpetrate a crime directly it's their own intention which they want to fulfill for them they are committing the crime okay so in other words those who actually commit the crime or offense with their own hands or through innocent agent innocent agent as in a child who is not having that ability to differentiate between right and wrong or it may be like a person of unsound mind all those people okay a person under the influence of involuntary intoxication in all such cases we would say that through some innocent agent they are committing the crime Okay, so this can be this can be in a case the respondent used the person to make him do the act or offense, and the person did not have the ability or the capability to commit the crime. In such a situation, the investigator would be mm -hmm. principal offender, and the perpetrator would be the innocent uh, agent. Like in Hindi, we say right, "dusro ke kadh pe bandhok rakh ke chalana." It's like you are taking help or assistance of another person, and you are just getting your work done okay so in such mm. cases it will be principle of first degree either he is just doing it himself or taking help of some innocent agent this statement is important okay the one in bold or the one which is underlined these two statements are important here mm. <clears throat> so the presence of principles in the first degree at the place where an offense has taken place is not essential he might not be there like we have seen in this case the saddle person may simply convince the kid to kill these two people and it's not necessary that he would accompany the child so his presence is not like an essential ingredient otherwise also he will be held liable innocent agent is a person who by reason of either immaturity of understanding or impairment of mind the person is not able to uh, validly make a difference between right and wrong the person committing the actus rea could be completely innocent okay he is completely innocent even though he is the one doing the act or doing the omission but the person is innocent because they do not have the capability to commit an offense their mental ability is not that strong yet so if a child below 7 years is convinced that you kill this person that person who convinced that adult person will be held liable so there was this case wherein employees were asked by their employer to send out letters and participate in some sort of a financial transaction and they were not told that this will lead to some fraudulent transactions okay these people were not having the idea that they were made to do that and the employer was principal offender in this case because he was not having the knowledge over there okay so during this uh, demonetization time also there were so many like uh, you know like people who might be having that their bank accounts but they do not fall under that uh, 
earning bracket wherein they need to like pay income tax and their accounts were being used right to uh, convert the currency notes right mm -hmm. yes ma'am uh, there was an uh, one movie also on that uh it is what was the name uh, Chappal Farke. Yeah, there is this movie on that thing itself during demonetization, how people use that like a business, right? So that thing over there. So in such a case, if like a child's account is being used to do such sort of fraudulent transaction or something, there also this situation would fall. But this was just an example of like an employer and employee relation wherein employees were uh, made to do that, even though they were not aware of the given situation. This is clear, right? Yes, ma'am. But in case of group, uh, in case of a group, hmm. if there is a leader and there are his uh, followers, let's say. In in case of a leader, group, there is a leader, leader of the group, hmm. and then his uh, accomplices, ac not exactly accomplices, his uh, helpers. Hmm. They all plan together, and the leader does a crime. Uh, will will these people who help him do fall in the first degree, ma'am? Hmm. Actually, this concept of first degree, second degree, and this uh, the other two things which we have read, these are accessories of fact before and after fact. These are not uh, given in IPC. Okay, these concepts are not applicable here. It's just from the common law we derive for understanding. It's given in syllabus. But yes, in IPC also we have such a situation or such concepts wherein we say that a person may be held liable for criminal conspiracy, common objective, we have concepts like abetment, okay, somewhat they are similar, but again, little bit it's different also. As such, we don't say like principal in first degree, this person is responsible okay. or second degree, okay, so these are just something other concept. But yeah, for IPC, what will happen? Those you would get here. Say criminal conspiracy, abetment, all these things are there, okay? So for okay. IPC, like provisions would be a little different. This is just like understanding about this. Okay, so this was principle of first degree. Just you can remember those two examples of a child and the person killing someone himself. Directly. Yeah, directly. Next one is principal and second degree. So principal and second degree are those who are present at the commission of the crime also, and they provide some sort of aid or assistance for its commission, like the one who was waiting inside the car. Accessories at okay. fact and principles in the second degree are two classifications which denote the same person, like the accessories which we have seen right at fact. Uh, after fact, those are also similar. Accessories at fact are generally classified as principles of second degree, that is an aider or a better of the principal offender in commission of the crime. They are just helping or they are might be abetting, right? They are creating such a situation wherein this criminal ends up finally committing the crime. Also, principle of second degree are those person who may actually or constructively present in the scene of occurrence. Such person do not actually participate in the commission of crime. Like we saw the person was simply waiting inside the car, he did not even get down. So he is not yes. participating as such, but yes, he is assisting or he is providing help. So they remain present actually or constructively at the occurrence of the crime and thereby aid, assist, encourage, or abet commission of the crime. So what is the difference between actually and constructively um, being present? Like in a chain snatching incident, hmm. uh, there are two people, one will be driving the bike and the billion will be Billion will snatch the chain. Hmm. Okay. Here, even though he's the bike driver is there, uh, he's he's like he falls in the second degree. Like hmm. even though he's present actually hmm. uh, at the occurrence of crime, he's aiding him to escape. Hmm. 
yes matching the chain yes he will fall under the second degree the one who is riding the bike and inside second degree only we have two kind of presence actual and constructive uh, presence any idea what this may be presence of the person <clears throat> No idea. So this again, like in movies and all, we would see, right? That find someone is present actually, as in the example that you gave, a person is riding the bike. The example that I gave, the person is waiting inside the car. All those are pre actual presence. The person is actually present over there. Okay. In another case, it might be constructive present, as in physically the person is not there, but still he is there like we will see right some movies i forgot the name definitely but there are so many movies wherein it would be like there is one person who has you know like set up all the cctv cameras and everything at the crime place and he will be just you know like monitoring it from his home yes. so he will basically be seeing sitting at his home and he would be you know like might be over call directing the other yes. person that take left take right go this way go that way there is a person over there you must have seen right very common scene Yes, ma'am. Right. So okay. In he may not be present exactly yeah. at the scene of crime, but he will be aiding from a, a different place, yeah, helping him to commit the crime. Yeah, physically not present, but still it's almost like he's present there, right? Over call, he is doing everything for the other person. Got it. Okay. So that is nothing but constructive presence where the person is doing it. I think there was some other movie also wherein like one person, right, where he is going, what he is doing, just to track everything. Like he he had undergone some like operation. Okay, so this criminal was like planning to do some, like commit some crime. So what he did is he like approached this doctor and he said that, okay, you just tell this person that he needs to undergo this surgery. And in name of surgery, what they did is they just inserted some uh, you know, like uh, this, uh, just to, you know, like detect where the person is going, okay, like GPS is staying, plus his like okay. voice and everything also will be like recorded. And this other person, he can just play it and hear what he is talking, where he is, he can like track live location of the person. It was like that. So in that case, what he was doing, he was just sitting at his home. He was checking everything and he would be like asking other people that you go there. This person is going towards this highway, that road, this road. And then finally you like kill the person. Those would be falling over here. That it is presences, like constructive presence as such. The person is not there, but he is helping in such a way. Constructive presence at occurrence of the crime, and thereby he would aid, encourage, assist, whatever is needed. This can be seen in instance where the driver of the car, the same example that I gave, driver is waiting, and the person is simply like committing the crime, and then he is meeting there. So, principal in first degree, the one directly committing, or someone making an like a person who is unable to differentiate between right and wrong commit the crime. Second degree, someone assisting, aiding, helping. It may be actual presence or it may be um, constructive presence as well. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So what is the difference between first and second degree? I, I, I assume you have already understood, but yeah, just there are these two statements. So what do you feel are the differences, first degree and second degree? In a second degree, the uh, the person a person is helping to commit a crime uh, helping some other person to commit a crime or in he's somehow involved in the crime hmm. assisting the person or helping him in some way hmm. whereas in the first degree uh, the person himself is committing the crime or is using another person who is uh, who is not sufficiently mature enough to distinguish hmm. uh, right and wrong, is hmm. using a person to commit a crime. Yes. <clears throat> right, so that's the basic difference which we have. So these are, like I mentioned, right, these are common law principles. 
That's why in IPC, you will not get this provisions, but yeah, similar provisions you will get. So there is a distinction between principle in first degree and second degree uh, fact rather than legal consequences. There, guilt is exactly same, unless in particular case, some factor of mitigation applies to one and not to the other. And in such case, principal may be guilty of a higher grade of crime than the other. Principal in the first degree is the immediate who is like doing it. Second degree is just providing some aids <laughs> or assistance or some encouragement. Those things is providing. Okay, so in case of IPC, we would see provisions related to uh, abatement. Okay, that's there in unit two when we will discuss. For some crimes, the off section itself may make provision relating to abatement. If that's not there, the general provision so apply like that. We have certain things. So that was nothing but principle of first and second degree. Now we have these two concepts as well. Accessory before the fact and after the fact. So accessory before the fact are those who, though not present in the scene of occurrence or where the crime is committed, counsel, procure, or command another to commit the crime. Even though they are not present, they have committed, okay, where the crime is committed, they will command or they will help someone else, okay? Accessory before the fact is unable to render aid at the actual moment of perpetration, like you said, uh, chain snatching. That person may not be able to ride the bike on that specific day, but he may be providing some other aid or assistance, okay? Because anyone in such a position is held constructively present and therefore known as a principal. Like we have already seen, right? Even though the person is not there, by some other ways, he may be providing help or assistance. So it's assumed as if the person is constructively present there. He may render aid in advance before committing the crime only, aid is being provided. Aid as in how to plan it, from where to collect the <laughs> weapons, how to, you know, like commit the crime without leaving any sort of evidences. In so many ways, assistance may be given. So he is just providing the aids maybe. As by procuring the preparator, the weapon, or other means by which he can commit the crime very much easily. The element of time requires special mention here, but this is only to emphasize the, the want of legally established time limit within which the, uh, you know, like the assistance was given. So it is not the ground that person would say that, no, I gave him this uh, gun like a month ago and he has committed the crime today only. So that will not be an excuse. But aid was provided and with that aid only <clears throat> the person ended up committing the crime. That is what is more important over here. So when we say accessory before the fact, fact you can consider as in what crime is being committed in reality, right? So it is before the act, before the fact, before the crime was committed, some kind of assistance, some kind of help was being provided. And the person need not be present on the day of occurrence. There may be a big gap as well between when the aid was provided and when the crime actually took place, right? That is also important. So essentially <clears throat> before the fact as in some help or some assistance given before committing the crime, which will make the process easy for the actual offender. Okay. And just because he is not present there, he cannot say that as an excuse, he would be held uh, liable. Accessory after fact. Accessory after fact is one with knowledge of the other's guilt render, uh, renders assistance to the person. Okay, someone knows that this person has committed a crime and even after that he provides assistance. That's why we are seeing accessory after fact is similar with the second degree because here also this person killed these two even after knowing this person is assisting him right he is waiting that okay you come i will drive you home right i will help you escape from the given situation 
right? So what he is doing, receive relief, comfort, harbor, assistance, some kind of assistance is provided. Maybe he is saying that you can stay at my house, I will give you food, I'll give you place to stay. All those are nothing but assistance given, like taking care of the person basically, okay? Okay. So they would be considered as accessories after fact, after the crime is being taken place, this person is uh, providing the help or assistance. A person who is accessory before fact may also become accessory after fact. There is no restriction as such, right? Someone may provide the assistance before also. Maybe this person who is waiting inside the car, he only bought this mm. weapon for the person. All right, he can provide some help before also, after also he is only helping the person. That can also be, uh, you know, like considered. But what common law did not recognize is, take for example, this person has committed a crime, all right? And this person goes back home and he's like this one, right, we are seeing. <clears throat> who is present at the moment at the Where is the second degree? Yeah, see, someone has received relief, comfort, harbor, all these things are there, right? So common law did not recognize. Take, for example, like the husband has committed a crime and he goes back home. Okay, and wife is providing him with the necessary supplies, like wife is letting him stay in the house, providing him food, clothing and everything. In that case, wife would not fall under this classification. Okay, so wife was excluded. Like there are many situations, in fact, in law wherein the relation between husband and wife, right, that's like considered sort of a separate thing. Okay, so... Okay even right like the communication that happens between husband and wife that is considered as privileged communication as in wife would not be you know like made liable that okay fine you tell he is your okay. husband so he must have told you what crime he has committed so now you tell what crime he has committed what all things he confessed okay that cannot be done in in law like this relation is like considered as a separate you know like a privileged thing same ways what this uh, accused person when he would hire a lawyer definitely the person would go and in front of the lawyer he would just narrate the entire story even though he has committed a crime he would tell that right mostly that i have done this help me now this communication between the advocate and the client is also considered as privileged communication okay as in court would not ask the you know like the uh, advocate that you tell he must have narrated the story in front of you so you tell what is the truth advocate plus wife both would not be called like that okay same way is like if wife commits a crime husband also would not be called that's like privileged communication okay, okay. So same way is here what happens is like husband is not given that uh, liberty but wife is given because it like common law right old time law so it was assumed that anyways like if husband is coming home, wife would like receive him, provide him with the necessary supplies and everything. So just because she is doing it, she would not fall under this classification. Okay, even if the husband has committed something, wife is allowing him to stay at home, providing him the necessaries like food, clothing, shelter, etc. Wife would not fall under this classification. Okay, her husband. So under common law, a wife cannot be accessory after the fact just because of the reason that she having concealed her husband and gave him assistance knowing about the crime. But this does not apply to the husband who renders such assistance. Husband would be held liable, but wife was not held liable. That was the concept. Okay. This is accessory before and after effect. Is this part clear? Yes, ma'am. So these before and after. Okay, so these four things we had over here. Then we have this um, IPC general explanations. When we say general explanations, a lot of things are like definitions that are there. Okay, and after that we have um, punishments also. So are you free? Can we do the punishment part? Yes, ma'am. You're free, right? Okay, ma'am.
general explanation part we will do in the next class okay we'll see punishments today all right there was this question in fact in 2021 march april exam explain various types of punishments to which offenders are liable under ipc so now before like starting with the different types of crimes which are there in IPC, IPC provides for this list of punishments that may be provided. Okay, there are a total of six different types of punishments which apply, death, imprisonment for life, imprisonment for a specified duration which may be rigorous or simple, forfeiture of property, fine and solitary <clears throat> confinement. In total, under IPC, we have six classifications. Out of these, first five are mentioned under section 56 of IPC. Okay, section 56 provides for these five types. Plus, one more type is given in section 76, which is solitary confinement. So, in total, if we calculate, there are six types of punishments, but because for solitary confinement there are like a lot many guidelines rules and other things that needs to be followed it's given like separately okay so these are the different types of punishment so what is the first one death as a punishment death penalty <clears throat> Death penalty as a punishment. What is it? It's a capital punishment only given to rarest of the rare cases. <clears throat> only the rest of rare cases, yes. Anything and in that... India, hmm. only by hanging, hanging is hmm. allowed. Hmm. Yes. So is it public hanging, private hanging? How is it? Not by public hanging, only <laughs> within the confines of the prison. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So first one is death penalty, which is, yes, in many other countries, different uh, modes of killing a person may be applied. But in case of India, we just have hanging, which is permitted <clears throat> okay so we just have hanging which is permitted and that too it will be applicable in case of rarest of rare crimes only not like in every single case it can be given even though punishment is provided like in case of death if we see punishment may be death penalty also but in not every single case wherein someone kills another death penalty is not given it has to be like rarest of rare cases where death penalty is uh, given like that nirbhaya gang rape case which happened in delhi their death penalty was given. Recently also there was something on news regarding uh, this death penalty, which was like ordered to a uh, woman. Have you heard that from UP? Shabnam, a uh, woman named? No, ma'am. No, right? Okay, so what happened is you can read that case. In, in fact, uh, state of UP versus uh, Shabnam. Okay, Shabnam versus state of UP. So there was this case wherein it was like in UP, okay, there was there were these two families, one was uh, Shabnam, and there was another person who was like, like she was having a relationship with him, but he was, I think, some uh, cab driver or something, and Shabnam, on the other hand, everyone was like some teacher in government school, something, everyone was like in teaching profession, and she was like a teacher in some government school, okay, so and I guess some uh, like re religion or caste issue was also there. I'm not very sure. 
So this was like a major thing that he is a cab driver, not that educated. And on the other hand, in her family, everyone is like from the education background. And she was also a teacher in government school and everything. Okay, so her family was like not accepting this relation. So a few years went by, she was trying to convince they were not ready to accept it. After that, she was pregnant, okay? And she wanted to convince, convince, they were not convinced. So one day what she did is in like at night, right? While having dinner, uh, she mixed poison in the food, which was like served to the family. Okay, in her family, okay. it was like mother, father, brother, sister-in-law, and then their kids also, one or two kids were also there. So what she did is total seven members, I guess, to everyone, she gave poison in the food. So everyone had that thing in break, uh, like dinner and they all like slept off. And then she called her boyfriend and both of them killed all the family members, okay? Including like a kid, which was I think some three, four years of the brother. She okay. killed everyone. And after that, what happened is that, you know, like they were, I think like clueless or something. They called the neighbors and everything and they were like, okay, they just died and this happened that happened and then finally like she was saying that this her boyfriend right he just came and killed all the family members and he was like no we both killed then she killed like that it went on for like few months and then after investigation police came to know that yeah this is only what has happened both of them uh, killed all the seven family members so case was filed it went to the trial court they gave death penalty then it went to high court, Supreme Court. Everyone confirmed death penalty. They went for this mercy petition also. It was rejected. And by the time, she also had her baby. Okay, so she was going to the court and praying that, okay, fine, you give death penalty to this, my boyfriend. But to me, you just, you know, like, excuse it because I have this kid whom I need to take care of. Right, then court said that, no, you, like, you have killed your, like, brother's kid right who was like very innocent just a kid he was not even aware of what's going on you still kill that baby so what like take care you would do for your like own kid right and anyways like some friend of her was taking care of the kid so supreme court and every other court just confirmed that thing that yes death penalty is only like the right punishment to be given okay so that again was like a rarest of rare case wherein in one single day seven family members were killed by both of them like combined even the kid was not uh you know like even the kid they killed so those would be the cases wherein death punishment would be given because other punishment would not justify it it's so severe right so that's the first type of uh, punishment which we have okay yes ma'am and uh here right you would see this if you read any judgment okay of wherein death penalty is announced you would see this is written that hang till the person dies okay because what might happen is sometimes take for example someone is you know like uh, the the officials who are there to execute the order they are trying to hang the person and kill him what if something goes wrong and the person do not die in the first attempt okay in such cases in earlier times it was like because it's like hang this person as in you can only hang once whether the person dies or not you cannot do it twice because we have this concept right that uh, like a person can be punished only once for the crime which he has committed right for one crime only one punishment so once you try to hang this person if somehow it was unsuccessful, you cannot repeat it twice, okay? And it was also considered like as if uh, God is giving some signal that this person is innocent and he should not die and all that thing was believed. So right now it's like they would mention it clearly, hang till he dies. If you need to try 100 times also, it's fine. This person should die. That's the ultimate aim, okay? That's how it is written. Yes, ma'am. And uh, you will see, like, there is this convention, UN convention, UN convention on torture and other cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment and punishment. Okay, there is this convention. So, for international conventions, 
then uh, hmm. for international conventions it's like the country can decide uh, right whether they want to ratify the convention or not so we have this uh, convention united nations convention against torture and other cruel inhuman and degrading treatment and punishment which is ratified by 83 countries already okay it it was ratified and it is uh, it started from like 1985, but still India has not ratified this convention. Okay, why? Because any idea why India has not ratified, even if there are 83 countries which already ratified it? Because we will have to then abolish this capital punishment. Yes. So once we ratify it, we need to abolish death penalty from the national law. So that's the reason why this is not done because the provision should be there because sometimes other punishments might not justify. So in rarest of rare cases, it is necessary. That's why India has not even ratified it. So this is the first type of punishment which we have. So there are this, this case was there, Jagmohan Singh versus state of UP, wherein it was said that death penalty is unconstitutional and it is invalid as a form of punishment, it is invalid. But a constitutional bench of Supreme Court consisting of five judges dismissed this appeal and they said that death penalty imposed after trial in accordance with procedure established by law is not unjustified, it's not unconstitutional, it's not going under against Article 21. Any idea what is Article 21? Article 21 provides the right to life. Right to life. So are there any exceptions where this right to life can be taken away? Yes, ma'am. By, by, if by law, uh, capital punishment can be given and it can be taken away. Yes. So through a proper procedure which is established, this may be taken away. So they said that Death penalty as such is not unconstitutional if it is happening after trial, right? They have seen all the evidences, witnesses are examined, everything happened. After end of the trial, if death penalty is given, that's not unconstitutional. So in India, we have a lot many provisions wherein death penalty is there. And in Bachchan Singh versus State of Punjab, it upheld validity of death penalty, but court provided restricted the provisions of death penalty in rarest of rare cases only. Okay, next one, imprisonment for life. So what is that? Imprisonment uh, till his he, all his life he, he should be in jail. He should be imprisoned. So any provision to release the person before that? Only by presidents. Hmm. Clear to the president, they can be released. Yeah, president or governor is having the power, they can reduce it also. So yes, imprisonment for life, technically it means entire lifetime, remaining lifetime of the person. But because jails are already overcrowded, plus we uh, we believe on this theory that people can reform themselves into a better human being. So there is no use of, you know, like just letting the person stay in the prison, but the person can do much better things in his life. So it's like after a certain point, there is a possibility that the person might have reformed himself into a better human being. Mm -hmm. So we can just release the person before that also. And for the purpose of calculating this year, right? Like for IPC, in many provisions, it's very much needed to know like the maximum punishment, okay? So if life, life imprisonment is given, the year we need to calculate, right? Because someone may survive for one year, someone may survive for like 90, 80, 90 years also. So for the purpose of calculation, it's considered as 20 years, that if it's life imprisonment, it's counted as 20 years. And then based on that, the calculations are done. But yeah, technically speaking, it means imprisonment for lifetime only. But the person may be released after serving 14 years of imprisonment, he may be released also. Okay. 
and imprisonment for life whenever it's given it's always rigorous imprisonment it cannot be simple imprisonment for a lot many provisions we get life imprisonment okay what about this one imprisonment for a fixed time and what is simple and rigorous imprisonment simple means very lightly light duties hmm. may be given in the prison hmm. and rigor means the hard labor the, the prisoner will be subjected to do hard labor hmm. in the prison yes so simple imprisonment and, yeah and and the crime will be for rigorous it will be a grave offense hmm. yes for rigorous imprisonment it's usually the serious crimes wherein it is given so both of these may be for a fixed duration and duration would vary right some maximum duration would be given within that anything may be given by the judge so both these may be simple also rigorous also simple will be some simple labor like baking cookies or things like that preparing some handmade things but in case of hard labor it's like hard labor breaking big stones and stuff that we see in movies those things are there that is the third classification of punishment which is most common mostly we see this one then we have forfeiture of property so forfeiture implies the loss of property of the accused under this punishment state will seize the property of the criminal it is the result of wrong or default which is caused by the person the property forfeited may be movable or immovable so forfeiture in case of forfeiture his property may be taken because he has done something using those properties of his so it would be seized by the government as well so there are these provisions 126 127 125 these are uh, where this punishment is given. Okay. The fifth type of punishment is fine. So when we talk about fine, right, and we see the IPC, there may be certain provisions wherein it just talks about fine. That this is not like a very serious crime so punishment may be 500 rupees fine 2000 rupees fine like that provision will be there same ways there may be certain crimes wherein it will say that it may be either imprisonment or fine okay either one can be given and sometimes for serious crimes it will be like punishment and fine okay so punishment may be only the sole a uh, fine may be the sole punishment given. It may be along with imprisonment or it may be in alternative, right? Either you give imprisonment or fine. Like that also it may be given. For some crimes we would see, like for very less number of crimes we would see, IPC has mentioned the amount of fine also, that it should not exceed 2,000 rupees, it should not exceed 5,000, 10,000 rupees. But for majority of the offenses, it's like simply they have mentioned fine, whatever the judge feels, judge can provide that, okay? This part is clear, right? Yes, ma'am. So last one is solitary confinement. Solitary confinement as in one person is kept in prison, but he is confined alone. There is no one else with whom he can talk to. Otherwise, inside prison, it's like, like a college hostel itself, right? People would be sitting together. They would be doing so many activities together. There will be, in some places, there would be TV and stuff also. They would have food, do things like that it is. But solitary confinement means they don't have access to other people. They are kept all alone. Because it is, it's realized that if a person is kept all alone, all by himself, self-realization, would happen much faster and easier. Even for normal people, there is something called as vipassana, right? Have you heard of that? Yes, ma'am. You have heard, right? Meditation. 
meditation. So there also like normal meditation is at one level. The pasna is like they would not talk to anyone. They would all by themselves, no phone, nothing, no connection with outside world. They would just go and stay there for a week. And whoever comes back from Vipassana, they would be like, it's a life-changing experience. Why life-changing? Because they got the, the self-realization, right? They got an opportunity for that. Same yeah. thing, there is a possibility of happening it over here. But then, like, people have this, people are different, right? It's not like everyone is same. Whoever is going for Vipassana, mostly they are going at their own interest. That means they are of that kind of people who can meditate, who can go there, who would enjoy that experience. But there may be another section of people who are, there are people, right, who would be very much talkative. They cannot stay by all by alone. They would go mad, basically, right? Yes, ma'am. Some people would need, like, might be attention of people. There are some people, right, who would seek attention. So there are so many different types of people. When we are talking about solitary confinement, no, it's not okay. that the person is getting to choose that. Person is not saying that keep me all by alone, but it is given to him as a punishment. So we need to consider that it may, in, you know, like it may affect the person in a very negative way also. That's the reason yes. why for solitary confinement, we have a lot of guidelines that needs to be followed just to ensure no. that while we were trying to do good, it does not, you know, like adversely impact the criminal. That's the thing. Many, in many cases, cases uh, solitary people who are confined solitarily uh, become more aggressive also. Become more? Aggressive. Aggressive, yes. That's the thing, right? Might be those people were not of that category who would meditate and stuff. They would be like the other one. Right, so that's why it should be given like with a lot of taking a lot of precautions and stuff. So this is what we have roughly the provisions that if the term of imprisonment is less than or up to six months, like up to maximum six months duration, in such cases, solitary confinement shall not exceed one month. Out of six months or out of whatever duration, only one month may be solitary confinement. If term of imprisonment is more than six months, but less than one year, then period of solitary confinement shall not exceed two months. If it is more than one year, that solitary confinement may be up to three months only. On top of that, it has to be followed that a person must be convicted for an offense under this code, because if it is like a person is convicted under provisions of negotiable instruments and for check bounds, it's not that major an offense, right? For that, you cannot like give solitary confinement as a punishment, because the legislation do not even talk about that punishment, right? So we are only talking about IPC. And yes, if there are any other legislations where solitary confinement is there, there also it may apply. But just because it's given in IPC, other laws, it would not apply. Because there are so many laws, even in case of labor laws, there are too many labor laws wherein it imposes like criminal responsibility on a person. But even though it's criminal, it's not that serious of a crime also. So it's just confined to the provisions of IPC, the offenses given under IPC. The offense must be one for which court has the power to sentence the accused to rigorous imprisonment. For simple imprisonment, it does not apply. For rigorous only, it will apply. So these provisions need to be followed while providing punishment, okay? And this is given in section 74 of the legislation. And solitary confinement, when it is awarded, right? At one stretch, it should not be for more than 14 days. So even if for this one, right? A person was given like six months of imprisonment. And out of this one month, he is kept like solitary confinement. There, it should not be like altogether one month. It has to be like 14 days maximum. Okay, and when the imprisonment is less than three months, solitary confinement shall not exceed seven days uh, in one month for the whole imprisonment. Basically, you need to like divide and that's how you need to give this type of punishment. So this is on the punishments part. This is clear, right? Yes, ma'am. It's time, sir. 
Um, uh, like uh, last week, I think uh, there was a judgment mm. given mm. Um, wherein the judge uh, pronounced that uh, he punishing a bus driver who was responsible for the death of 19 people mm. should be sentencing the driver uh, for a period of 190 years. Period of 190. <laughs> Sorry, okay. period of? One, 190 years. Okay. Uh, for each of the death being caused. Okay. There were 19 people and 10 years for each people, each person. So how is it justified, ma'am? The person needs to survive that long, first of all, to solve his punishment. What was the name? Do you remember the name? Oh, just a minute, ma'am. It's Sham Shamsuddin Shamsuddin. Okay. Can you spell it? Uh, yes, yes, H A M. Yes, you. Yeah. Ah, uh, something. What's this? Versus Gyan, Gyan in the IT. Okay, I'll check that. Recent one, right? Yes, hmm. Madhya Pradesh, Sessions Court, Sessions Court, Jayan. First, additional sessions. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll see that. <laughs> Right. There would be so many things. And then at the end of the day, right, whatever they are ordering after that also, you know, like people would escape. This, have you seen that movie, Rustam? No, ma'am, no. No, okay. Do you watch Hindi movies? Like, do you understand Hindi? Yes, ma'am, I watch, uh, I, I know Hindi. Okay, okay. So you can watch that. Oh, it's a good one. Based on a real okay. case. Okay, ma'am. Okay, let's see this one. Okay, so fine, then we'll continue with this general explanations part. Okay, all right, okay. punishment is this one. Okay, so this general explanation part is there, which we will uh, see in the next class. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Okay. And Thank you. Not tomorrow. I will inform you the date. Okay. 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 Then. Bye bye. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah.